In May of 1981, Terrace teachers began a work to rule campaign in response to the arbitrary transfer of two well respected principles, an action which gained momentum drawing in working condition issues and leading to a strike in June. The resulting contractual provisions they were able to obtain in a personnel practices contract constituted a significant achievement provincially for all BC teachers in their continued efforts to achieve full bargaining rights. This is the story of those days in May and June 1981. What precipitated my memory is that they wanted to either transfer or demote two of the administrators, a fellow by the name of Roy Greening and another fellow by the name of Tom Hamakal. And once the, the reaction started, then other issues came to light, uh, issues like due process, or rather lack of due process, um, lack of, of any kind of grievance procedure, um, things like that, and it just, it just uh, kind of like the, the witch's pot, you know, it just bubbled and bubbled. And... Uh, what has moved teachers in the past, my experience, has been any sense of unfairness or injustice. We felt very strongly about the issues. We felt very strongly about the superintendent at the time. A lot of us were young. My particular staff were a very young staff, and I don't think we had any idea of the history of <laughs> the event. If the board refused to talk about it, you, you had two choices. You put up or shut up, you know? And so we put up. I mean, it was a, a, an unbelievable en environment in Terrace for that period of time. And the union guys, who had never done anything union-wise in their lives before, uh, were, did everything beautifully. I mean, and ev all these members who had, if you had told them at any time that they were going to go on strike, a lot of them were pretty conservative. They didn't want to, they, they didn't think they'd ever in their lives go on strike. But now they had become militants. It was a, an unbelievably exciting situation to be in to see the silent masses revolt. The general rule in the trade union movement in, in BC's labor law, like labor law across North America actually, was that when a union and an employer sat down to bargain, everything was on the table. And if there were problems, they all had to be worked out. Teachers, on the other hand, were, were in a kind of a ghetto. They were just about isolated in terms of the kind of legal system they had. There were very, very few other employees who, who didn't have that normal broad scope of collective bargaining rights. What teachers had instead was a very, very rigid and narrow system in which, number one, all that could be negotiated was salaries. The school board was reluctant to negotiate with the Terrace District Teachers Association. The board offered to create a policy to address teacher issues, but policy statements were written, amended, and approved by the board without teacher input. In June, Terrace teachers took strike action. Hamakawa, Tom Hamakawa, was a junior secondary principal. So his students were a little older, and, and his students took some actions on their own, uh, and I think that involved their parents. Uh, I'm sure it did, actually. And as the parents became involved, uh, the, the public became involved. And the feelings were very strong on both sides. Uh, I understand that the um, local chamber of commerce, commerce discussed our job actions at a meeting, and. and uh, the predominant feeling was that uh, perhaps we should all be in jail. But, uh, and, uh, I don't think it's any different than, than any other strike anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. There's two sides and there's a huge divide between them. Following the six-day strike in June, staff from the provincial government were sent to Terrace to bring an end to the job action. The result was an obligation for both parties to negotiate and agree upon a personal practices contract. In the end, the signed personal practices contract was one of the first in BC to include issues such as promotion, demotion, 
and transfer of teachers and administrators. I mean, they achieved something that was uh, quite significant. Uh, they took strike action to get it, and it sort of uh, gave us a real impetus. Uh, we were, even at that time, beginning to organize for a major campaign in, in September, October, uh, in our communities to, uh, to, to argue strongly for increased bargaining rights. And by doing that, we wanted to take to the bargaining table uh, items other than salaries and bonuses and, and try and get our school board to agree to them on the basis that uh, such provisions did exist in other agreements and it was possible to do that provided we could get their agreement. And uh, what happened in Terrace was a real good launching pad for that whole campaign. A movement towards that has to start somewhere. And uh, it just happened to start here. For, you know, everybody, this has been the story of the BCTF's successes. It's not been any one, per, one person or one local or anything like that. It's been not something where everything changed at once. It's been erosion of the uh, government position. What, what uh, benefits teachers have today were, uh, were not bestowed, bestowed upon them by a benevolent uh, system. The teachers had to uh, strike and uh, fight for all their gains they have. And uh, the danger is young people may tend to think, well, we have these things because we deserve it.